Parliament approved some its firm stance on the crisis in Georgia. MEPs discuss proposals to fight poverty and enhance the European social model. New consumer-friendly rules for the telecom sector. Parliament supports ban on animal clones for food supply. This month, the European Parliament's plenary session was dominated by the crisis in Georgia. Immediately after the extraordinary EU summit, French Foreign Minister Bernard Kouchner presented its conclusions to Parliament. The European Council has asked its President to pursue discussions to ensure the full application of the six-point agreement, and so the President of the Council, along with the President of the Commission and the Union's High Representative, will visit Moscow on the 8th of September. The bilateral negotiations on the partnership agreement will be postponed until Russian troops have withdrawn to their positions held before the 7th of August. MEPs welcomed the decision and they have asked the Council and the Commission to show determination in negotiating with Moscow and to make it clear that Russia has to respect international law. Russia has the same rights and duties of all states in the international community. One of these duties is to respect the sovereignty, territorial integrity and inviolability of internationally recognised borders. But by invading and occupying Georgian territory and recognising the independence of the secessionist Georgian provinces of South Ossetia and Abkhazia, the Russian authorities have systematically violated each of these three fundamental principles of international law. The chairman of the EPP ED group applauded the decision of the Council to postpone partnership negotiations with Russia and insisted that the Union should not tolerate systematic violation of international rule. Elmar Brock called for calm in dealing with Russia and also appealed for support for Georgia's reconstruction. I believe that it is important it is important to make clear that we do not accept certain things, but in order to avoid an escalation, we must also remain on speaking terms with all parties involved. We need to strengthen ourselves, and this means to strengthen our friends. For example, infrastructure aid for Georgia without red tape. It also means that the EU take part in peace missions in Georgia in the framework of the OSCE and the UN. We need to make clear that negotiations on a free trade agreement are the right way forward. Accordingly, the European Parliament had proposed a European Economic Area Plus. Two months ago, the Commission unveiled its social package. During Parliament's key debate, Chairman of the EPPED Group Joseph Dahl welcomed the proposals but was not entirely satisfied. My group would like to see the Commission go further with more concrete measures. The fight against poverty, the integration into labour markets of those now excluded, the promotion of worker mobility and improvement of workers' training are all areas which require clear, concrete measures and a strong commitment from the European Union and its member states. Entrepreneurship, small and medium-sized businesses and the introduction of flexicurity will all contribute to a more prosperous Europe, according to Dahl. For defending the social models, in defense of the social models in this era of globalization, we believe the most effective tool we have is economic growth. But we are convinced that to achieve the Lisbon goals, we have to promote entrepreneurship because only businesses can create jobs. We must improve the image of the European entrepreneur and convince young people to start businesses. We must also promote a competitive environment for our businesses. But in particular, we must support small and medium-sized companies, which are the key to job creation. Philip Bushill-Matthews, rapporteur on the European Works Council Directive, which is part of the social package, took up a line from the socialist leader in the parliament, who had complained about the strong position of the centre-right in Europe. May I start by thanking Martin Schulz for, in his opening remarks, uh, he reminded everybody that the centre-right is the largest grouping in this parliament, that the centre-right has the largest number of commissioners, and indeed the centre-right has the largest number of governments of EU member states. I would remind him in turn that there is a reason for that. The reason is that that's what the people have decided. No. 
Just as Joseph Dahl, Bushel Matthews emphasised the importance of job creation. We respect the importance of the rights of workers, but for our political group, we would also highlight the rights of non-workers, those people who currently do not have a job, are frozen out of the job market for whatever reason, and who want to have a job. This week, the European Parliament debated new rules governing telecom markets to take account of new technologies such as wireless, digital TV and mobile, and also to improve consumer rights. The aim of the reformed regulation is also to boost the growth of the sector, which accounts for 500 million consumers and already represents the 3% of EU GDP and accounts for 25% of overall economic growth. To increase the benefits and the rights of consumers and assure fair competition by the creation of a body of European regulators in telecoms have been the two priorities for the new regulatory framework defended by the EPPED group. Malcolm Harbour, responsible for the directive which will regulate users' rights, explained that the aim of the reform was to provide consumers with better information on their rights because electronic communications offers are now more complex and diverse than before. We want those empowered, well-informed consumers to make their choices on the basis of maximum clear information about price, about what's in the service, about whether there are any restrictions, about whether the cost of a handset is included if they take a longer contract. We want them, when they're shopping, to be able to do it easily, to be able to transfer their number quickly. I'm glad you support us on that. Uh, to be able uh, to study the length of the contract and for the length of contract not to be used as a restriction uh, when they try to move. The new directive will also check consumers' entitlements, for example, to data security, security and availability of the networks, good quality of universal emergency services or equivalent access for communications for disabled people. The other main point of the new legislation will be the creation of a body of European regulators in telecoms to improve a co-regulation system between national regulators and the European Commission. Pilar del Castillo, author of the proposal, said that rather than the creation of a new authority with a big bureaucratic structure and a heavy budget, BERT will be a most coherent and consistent solution because what the markets need now is to share responsibility to develop competition. In the current situation, this organisation, BERT, has a better definition of its tasks, structure, responsibilities, and it also has better accountability and more efficient financing. On Wednesday, MEPs backed Chairman of the Agriculture Committee, Neil Parrish, by adopting a resolution calling on the Commission to ban animal cloning for food supply. Mr Parrish asked the Commission in a debate to clarify its position on animal cloning and whether it agrees that cloning animals and their offspring for food production is ethically justified. Mr Parrish went on to ask the Commission what steps it had taken to prevent the import of cloned animals and whether any new proposals were in the pipeline to prohibit this practice. I think that not only is it a case of, of food safety when we deal with cloning, but it's also we in Europe and under the common agricultural policy, we believe that we are producing food to a very high standard and also to a very high welfare standard. And this is where I think that the problem occurs very much with cloning, is the fact there is a welfare of animal problem and that I think there is also a problem with consumer confidence in food that may come from cloned animals. The Health Commissioner said the Commission was evaluating what steps to take following an opinion by the European Food Safety Authority adopted in July, which highlights uncertainties regarding the health and welfare of animal clones. This programme was brought to you by the press service of the EPPED group, the largest political group in the European Parliament. For a full summary of the plenary session, log on to our website, epp-ed.eu. See you again soon. <laughs>